Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today I am reviewing the Collect uh, Prehistoric Mammals tube. It, it's a collection of Cenozoic mammals and I gotta say that this is a very nice collection of prehistoric animals. The paint job and the the crafts are very nicely done. So before I get started, the tube came with this paper right here. It says collect. It's kind of got like a scan code deal and then it has a collection of all the animals that are in the collection. And then it's got a little message written right there. You guys want to read that. So this is a pretty nice uh, collection of prehistoric animals. The paint job's nicely done and these animals are very crafted. They're crafted with such detail. So let's start off with this saber-toothed cat, the Smilodon. Yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure. So if you want to start off with the face and the head, pretty nicely crafted. He has his mouth open a little, kind of looks like he's roaring. The detail in his ears, his head, the bottom jaw, the, the snout. Yeah, the ears are pretty nicely crafted. And then his mouth's open and then those saber teeth. I mean, they, you, if you could tell the the craft was pretty nicely done inside the mouth, and then you could see those lower canines on the bottom jaw. So yeah, the saber tooth just appears to be standing and roaring up at something. He has his head held up. But yeah, pretty nicely crafted Smilodon head for the figure. The nose, the eyes. And then he's got that thick muscular neck. And then if you look on the on the back of his neck, he's kind of got like shaggy fur details, kind of like, kind of as if he has a very little bit of a mane on his on the back of his neck, and around his head. So yeah, I really like those shaggy fur details. And then the rest of the body, the way his legs are positioned, kind of not too much of a dramatic pose, but the way it's posed, he appears to be roaring at something. But the state he's at doesn't appear to be very aggressive. So yeah, and then if you look at the paws, the paws are very nicely crafted. I don't know if you could see the claws, the claw details in there. And then if you look at on the bottom of his paws, uh, you could see paw padding details in there. So pretty nicely crafted details. And then the way his body is designed, pretty short legs and very muscular body build. Sim which is kind of an accurate representation of the saber tooth. And then his tail, his short bob tail. And I apologize to point this out, but if you look very closely right there, you can kind of see his genitals. So yeah, this figure is obviously a male saber tooth. And then the paint job is very nicely done. Pretty, the colors are pretty well faded and blended in with each other. So he's kind of got like a brownish fur color, kind of similar to a lion's fur color, but maybe a little darker. And then the spots, you got some very dark brownish spots scattered everywhere. And then he's kind of got white underbelly. It says Smilodon and then it says Collecta on his leg. So going from the bottom jaw to the neck to the underbelly, pretty nicely faded white color. So. Yeah, this saber tooth figure is pretty nicely crafted. The fur details are nice. You can see the fur details on the elbows. And then in the inside of the mouth, it's kind of like a purplish pinkish in there. And then the saber teeth are pretty nicely painted. So yeah, this saber tooth figure is pretty nicely crafted. Probably my second favorite saber tooth figure. So yeah, we got the saber tooth. And then we got the woolly mammoth. Another nicely crafted figure. He's got the bulky head, the short, the small ears, and then the eyes. And what I like with the eyes in most of these animals, they have that glossy uh, color in there. So it kind of looks like their eyes are sh really shining. So yeah, the tusks. Pretty impressive set of tusks. And then he has his trunk held down. But the bulky head, the small ears, and the eyes, the trunk, the tusks. Pretty nicely crafted, and then 
And then what's unique about this mammoth figure is that I've never really seen any mammoth figures with the where the head is turned. Most mammoths just have their head held up or they're just looking for it, but this mammoth has his head turned to look at something. And then he's got that arched, humped shoulder, which is a characteristic of the woolly mammoth. Going down, he's got a very thick, shaggy fur coat, and then the tail. Kind of hard to tell this male, if this is a male or a female mammoth. Probably can't tell because if it's a male, it's probably hidden underneath all that thick fur coat. But with the leg design, he appears to be standing. Kind of has this, looks like he's holding up this foot a little bit. And then the toe columns. You can see the toe columns pretty nicely crafted. It says collect a woolly mammoth under it. And then the fur design is pretty nicely done. He's got a thick layer of fat with, with that characteristic shaggy fur coat. So yeah, I really like this mammoth figure. The paint job is pretty nicely done. It's kind of like a brownish, dark brownish fur color with the white tusks and then the black glossy eyes and the way the trunk is held. So yeah, this one's a pretty unique mammoth figure because it's the pose is unlike any other mammoth figure I've ever seen. So this is a very nice crafted mammoth figure and then we've got the andrew sarkis another one of my favorite this is probably my most favorite craft of the andrew sarkis so if you want to see the design on the head it's pretty pretty long snout kind of like a dog kind of looks like a hyena ish wolf or a giant hyena but then again we don't really know what this creature looked like given that all we have a found of this animal is this skull which measured up to a meter in length but yeah we can we can we, we can not really assume but but we think we know a lot about this creature but really all we have to work with is his skull so we think that he had a pretty strong bite force so yeah you, you can see the detail on the teeth white spots on the teeth and then the fangs and then the ears make him look pretty wicked looking so yeah he got that long snout with a very dangerous mouthful of teeth and a powerful bite so yeah and then the nose and then the ears and then the glossiness and the eyes so yeah pretty nicely crafted head of the andrew sarkis and then you can see kind of like a mane kind of like a horse's mane going along his back from his head to like behind his shoulder blades and then we got pretty nice details underneath. You can see the throat, the details in the throat and the neck. Pretty long neck. And then the way the legs are positioned, he, he might just be walking. So yeah, and then the, his long tail. So yeah, the legs and then the, the rest of the body is nicely crafted. And then what I also like is that this creature doesn't appear to have paws or more like hooves, which is a, a commonly thought to be a characteristic of the Andrew Sarkis. Some people might call it an actual wolf in sheep's clothing, but some say that this creature was actually more closely related to hippos and whales. So yeah, evolution can be a little strange. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure. And then if you look right there, it's no doubt that this creature is a male because you can see the genitals right there. So pretty nicely crafted figure. And then I love the paint job, kind of brownish fur color, kind of a whitish underbelly. I like the way these colors are kind of blended and mixed. And then you can see like more dark brownish on his back from his mane and on his back. And then he's kind of got spots down here, but stripes on his back. And then the fur detail is very nicely done. So yeah, this Andrew Sarkis figure is definitely one of my favorites. Pretty nicely crafted Andrew Sarkis figure. And then the details in the mouth, the kind of the pinkish purple details inside the mouth, pretty nicely done. And let's see here, let's take this Arsenotherium right here. Another nicely crafted figure, and 
This creature may appear to look like a rhino, but it's been said that this creature is actually more closely related to an elephant. So yeah, looks can be very deceiving. So the appearance in his head appears very rhino-like, and then he's got those two horns. Might, might think of him as the Triceratops of the Cenozoic era, and then he's got those two horns right there, and then the ears. And then the detail on the teeth, and the mouth is open. So the head isn't very nicely crafted. He appears to have his head down, maybe trying to charge at another rival. And then the way his shoulder goes up from his back right here, kind of slopes down to this tail, pretty interestingly crafted tail. And then the way his legs are positioned, so he, he might be trying to fend off predators or another rival. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure. He's standing, he has his head down, maybe getting ready to charge. And then the tail, and then the way the legs are positioned. Pretty nice details in the skin, and he's got a got like a grayish skin color with maybe a few scattered colors of browns. So yeah, this and this uh, Arsenal Ethereum figure is pretty nicely crafted, and then he's kind of got like pinkish paint job in there. So the paint job is pretty nicely done with this figure. So yeah, and then this creature also appears to be male. So yeah, most of these figures appear to be male. Okay, and then we've got this, I for, forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but I believe it's pronounced Kelikin. Yeah, Kelikin. Kind of sounds like Pelican. But yeah, this is obviously a species of giant bird, a terror bird. Kind of looks like a prehistoric ostrich. So if you see the detail on the head, pretty long crafted beak, and then you can see the feather details on the top of his head. And then his eyes, his beak appears to be held open. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure. I like the design in the feathers. So yeah, and then he's got a yellow beak, and then the rest of his color appears to be kind of like a black, blackish color, but then he's got those little wings right there. Yeah, he was a flightless bird. And then he's kind of got yellow right there on the edge of those wings. And then the body's pretty bird-like, the, the feathers and then the wings and then the tail feathers, pretty nicely crafted. And then the legs, the way the legs are positioned, he appears to be running. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure. Yeah, very nicely done. This is probably the only terror bird figure I have so far. And then the glossiness in his eyes. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure. Kelican, a terror bird. Yeah, and this guy kind of has a problem with standing up. And then we have this Uintetherium right here. So it's a pretty nicely crafted figure, very dramatic pose. Appears to be standing his ground. So, see the head. Kind of has like the horns like of a giraffe. He's got like six of them on his head, then above his eyes, and then on his nose. And then the ears. And then the glossiness in his eyes, and then the mouth kind of has those fangs sticking out. So yeah, another very bizarrely looking animal. And then he appear the way his legs are positioned, he appears to be standing his ground. And then the way his tail's kind of curved a little. And then it's no doubt that this figure is also a male. Well, the paint job is very nicely done. Kind of like a brownish color and then I love the detail on the stripes right here it kind of looks like maybe vines or the roots to a tree so yeah it's kind of like a dark brown figure dark brown coloring all right here and then it gets lighter going back over here to right here and then he appears to have a white underbelly so yeah this Utetherium figure is pretty dramatically posed 
And then we have this Moropus, for, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, which is an extinct species of horse, kind of looks like a horse mixed with an ape. So if you could see his head, he kind of has the head of a horse. And then his mane going down from his long neck to his back. So yeah, you can see the eyes, the mouth, the ears, the nose. Appears very horse-like. And then the mane and the horse-like neck. But then it gets even stranger going down because he appears to have the body of an ape. Yeah, his he had pretty long arms and then long claws at the end. So yeah, the way the, the legs are positioned, he's probably standing up tall and then these legs right here appear to be crouched down a little. And then the tail and then this figure also appears to be male. So yeah, it's kind of like a horse mixed with an ape, kind of walks like a gorilla. And then the coloring is pretty nice, it's a very, very lightish, yellowish, brownish, and then white underbelly. And then kind of dark brown on the mane, kind of pinkish inside the mouth. So yeah, this Morphus figure, really nice and crafted prehistoric animal, very bizarre. And then we've got the Megaceraps right here, which I believe was a species of rhino. You can see the head. His ears look pretty big and his mouth is open. It appears kind of rhino-like and then you see those two horns. Kind of have a yellowish color on them. And then the other ear. So yeah, the head appears to be a little rhino-ish like. And then the rest of the body, you can see thick neck and then the way the shoulder arches up like that. And then, I don't know, it looks like he appears to be charging at something. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure, the way he appears to be running and then kind of like a very, very, very dark brownish color. And then I see kind of yellowish splattered in some places, like on the side of his body on and, and on his horns. And this figure also appears to be male. And then the tail, so pretty nicely crafted Mega Serops figure. And then we've got the Dinotherium, which was an extinct species of bizarre looking elephant. He's got that long trunk. It may have been slightly shorter than the trunk of an elephant. And then he's got those characteristic horn or tusks sticking out of his bottom jaw. He, his mouth is open and he's got those elephant-like ears. So yeah, the head looks very bizarre. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted. You can see the muscles in the trunk. So yeah, and then the, the twists and turns inside the ears. So yeah, this Dinotherium figure is pretty nicely crafted, and then he appears to be standing there. The rest of it's kind of elephant-like, but with very long legs. Three legs are flat on the ground, but he's holding up his other leg. So yeah, pretty nicely crafted figure, and it's kind of like a very dark brownish, but with a little bit of orangey-reddish scattered in some places. And then his tail. And then he also appears to be a male. So yeah, this Dinotherium figure. Probably one of the largest elephant species that ever lived. Probably the second largest or third largest, I'm not sure. And then we've got the Indricotherium, or you could call it the Baluca Theorem or Parasyrotherium. Yeah, this creature went by three names, but I'm just going to call it the Andricotherium. Even though Parasyrotherium is labeled up underneath him. So yeah, this was said to be the largest land mammal that ever existed on the planet. It was an extinct species of rhino. But it kind of looks like a rhino mixed with a giraffe. So we got the head. He appeared to be a hornless rhino. Pretty simple head. The eyes, the ears, the mouth. Looks a little rhino-like, but without the horns. 
And then he's got that long neck, kind of like a giraffe. You can see the creases in the body and then the, sh the details in the shoulders are pretty nicely crafted. And then he's got those long legs. And then the long hind legs and then that long tail. So, yeah, this figure is pretty nicely crafted. The details in the skin are pretty nicely done. And he appears to be kind of like a orangey brownish for light color. So this intro Cotherium figure is pretty nicely crafted. And he appears to have his head turned, looking out at something. Yeah, he's got an advantage of being a very tall animal. And then we've got the Estaminosuchus, which I believe means crowned crocodile. And I'm not exactly sure why this figure was included with the Cenozoic animals, because um, if I, rem if I uh, did my research correctly, this creature actually existed way before the dinosaurs first appeared. So I'm not so sure about this figure, but if you look at the backside, kind of lizard-like, short tail, short legs, and and the body and then but the head is probably the most bizarre part you can see where it gets his name is Estaminosuchus which means crowned reptile or crowned crocodile and then the details in the mouth he's got those fangs the teeth and then inside the mouth kind of like a very lightish pinkish in there and then the horns are kind of like a brownish grayish the neck and kind of a yellowish underbelly and green on top with yellowish spots scattered everywhere. So yeah, Steminosuchus, pretty bizarre looking creature. I don't know why they included this creature in the Cenozoic tube. So yeah, this is the um, Cenozoic mammal tube from Collecta. And um, I apologize for this folks, but um, when I first got this collection, it did not come with the Deodon, which was the extinct species of pig. So yeah, I got this uh, tube um, for a pretty cheap price, like $30 on eBay. It was I tried to get the cheapest I could find because the price for this was just outrageous. Some were like $50, some were like $80. So I just looked for the cheapest one I could find, which was $30. So maybe that was that was a pretty low trick, not including the until the day of dawn. So yeah, that that's that left me a little disappointed. That's probably what I get for getting this tube at a very cheap price. But instead of coming with the day of dawn, it actually came with two mega seropses, so so yeah, that was a pretty low trick that they did. So yeah, and if I had to lose an animal, I would have rather lost the Estaminosuchus instead of the Deodon. So yeah, that was a pretty low trick. But other than that, I really like this collection of prehistoric animal figures. The paint jobs are nicely done, the way these animals are posed. They're very nicely crafted animals and very nicely done. So, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you guys later.